further on our uh, ethics material the next part that we will study after the code of ethics is standards of professional conduct there are in all seven standards of professional conduct prescribed by this uh, material let's look at them one by one first professionalism second integrity of capital markets third is duties to clients fourth duties to employers fifth investment analysis recommendations and actions sixth conflicts of interest and seventh responsibilities as a cfa institute member and or cfa candidate now all these standards have various sub bullets or sub standards under them which explain in greater detail what is covered in the main standard from an exam point of view i would say all the standards obviously are important but from an examination test point of view there are certain standards which are expected to be asked frequently or you would be tested or more questions would be asked from those standards these that i believe are duties clients then because clients are the foremost or the most important participant in the investment markets and investment analysis recommendations and actions now all these three are related to your duty to the client hence you would be expected to answer or there will be more questions that would be asked from these two standards or the applicability of these two standards then followed by i would say an equal weightage to conflicts of interest and uh, duties to employers and followed by all the other three as we, as we discussed standard 3 is you should study it extremely closely and understand it in thorough manner standard 5 and standard 6 and then obviously the rest of the others are also important but pay special attention to these three standards and on another to thing to remember is the ethics material is remains the same across all the levels it's just that the depth in which the question will be asked will be different at each level so be extremely attentive and understand all the relevant standards and concepts okay so let's look at the first one professionalism under that a knowledge of the law what does the standard say it says that all the CFA institute members and CFA program candidates must understand and comply with all the laws rules regulations pertaining to any government regulatory organization licensing agency or any other association governing the professional activities in that particular geography or jurisdiction wherever you are working as a professional you obviously need to understand what are the applicable laws and understand and comply with in case there is a conflict between the applicable local government or organization or agency law and the code and the standards then you follow the more stricter law rule or regulation whichever is more strict you have to comply with that and do not knowingly participate or assist in any kind of violation and if there is any violation that is happening then you must disassociate from such activity that is what the standard requires from you now let's understand in slightly greater detail guidance the uh, the institute gives various guidance points and recommended procedures or recommended actions in uh, in certain situations so let's look at them guidance understand the applicable laws and how does it compare to and relate to the code and standards as as we discussed in whichever geography you are suppose you are operating in a country where there are no stringent restrictions on insider trading but the code and standards prohibit any action on the part of member or candidate and taking undue advantage of the inside information so in this case Uh, when you compare the local law and the code and standards code and standards is more stricter and as a member or a candidate you need to follow the more stricter one also do not knowingly participate or assist in any violation when you see that any of your peers or subordinates or colleagues are getting involved in an act which you believe is a violation of the code and standards then do not knowingly participate or assist in any of such violation when you see such an activity then the steps that you need to take are 
first uh, maybe you can you decide to have a direct discussion with the offender or the wrongdoer you you can you can confront the wrongdoer and ask him that this uh, listen mate this is if this is what you're doing then it is against the standards or the ethics or the policy of the company and all that if he still continues with that activity then the next step for you is to notify your supervisor or the compliance department of your company of such a violation and if still you are unsuccessful in preventing the act then you need to disassociate from that activity and in an extreme situation it can also mean that you need to disassociate with or from the employment so that is an extreme situation obviously it is uh, it is something that is very very sensitive but uh, to follow the code and ethics you may need to do that any inaction on your part may be seen as your participation or assistance in such a violation there is a very very critical and important point where many of the people or many of the students are finding a problem in understanding it not doing any action or just sitting and observing the violation happening is also against a law you need to you may report the violations at least to the supervisor and compliance team and trying to stop it or else disassociate in some cases not all there is no mandatory requirement to report such violations to any governmental agency or authorities unless it is required under the applicable law or it would be prudent in certain circumstances that is the call that judgment call that you need to take and the recommended procedures that one needs to keep in mind are always as a professional stay updated with the changes in applicable laws regulations etc also keep on periodically reviewing the written compliance procedures that the company or firm has established also maintain the updated copies of the applicable statutes law rules and laws for your for the company's firm's employees peers to have access to or reference to whenever in doubt always seek advice from your compliance team or legal counsel as required never try and form your own opinions because you are not expected to be an expert on legal matters members and candidates should encourage their firms to develop and or adopt the code of ethics as it is and also provide any information on applicable laws clearly establishing the procedures or the steps to follow when somebody sees a violation and how to report the violation and further cfa institute strongly encourages its members and candidates to report any potential violations or suspect violations by fellow members and candidates we saw under the professional conduct program that an inquiry can be prompted when the institute receives a written complaint against a member so this is an example of that so that's on recommended procedures now let's just look at a quick application or on a case study and see what appropriate action or comment should be in this case Narendra Patel's employer a large financial services conglomerate is a lead underwriter for an IPO of equity shares by Jumbo Kim Company Patel finds that Jumbo Kim Company has concealed severe second quarter business losses in one of its business divisions and the preliminary prospectus for the issuance has already been distributed which means the marketing activity has been underway okay now uh, just take some time maybe this is the time to stop your video and think about this for say 30 seconds or so and then frame an answer all right let's look at the answer remarks now obviously when we see here jumbo king company is clearly in violation because it has misrepresented the factual information it has not disclosed the second quarter business losses in one of his business divisions and this could have a significant or material impact on 
the IPO pricing of the equity shares and as a result because the prospectus may will is not including such business losses it is a misrepresentation to the potential investors and clearly a violation so what are the steps appropriate steps or actions that Indra Patel should take so Patel should report the findings to an appropriate supervisor in his company if still Patel's firm does not disassociate from such an issuance then the appropriate action for Patel should be to disassociate from any relation or connection with the issuance and further seek legal advice to decide whether any additional reporting or any other action is warranted on his part. Clearly the firm if it's following the proper ethics then on report from Patel it would be disassociating itself with the under underwritten, underwriting agreement of the IPO of Jumbo King but if not, these are the actions Patel need to take.